far Sky's pink when I'm on ecstasy in Tokyo Young Lean is more interesting as an internet phenomenon than he is a musician. I'm not saying the music on this project is garbage, it is certainly pleasant on the ears, but the appeal of Young Lean certainly does not rest in his music alone. It doesn't even rest in his music mostly. Feel free to put this album on while doing something else, or lying completely still in a near comatose state. I'm feeling a decent to strong four on this thing. And what's the weirdest thing is that from one project to another project to this project, vocally and lyrically, it seems like Young Lean hasn't improved at all. Maybe in this instance, regressed a little bit. He still sounds like an amateur, and now he's several projects deep, but he has no amateur charm. I'm feeling a light to decent three on this thing. Take a pill and go to sleep. I'm chasing witches in the street. Young Lean has usually been more about aesthetic than anything, so I wasn't surprised about that going into this project. I kind of expected that. But seeing that aesthetic and that style improve and mature by leaps and bounds, and then also hearing these slight lyrical improvements here and there, these slight vocal improvements here and there, it has kind of made a world of difference. I mean, it's actually Lean's most likable project yet, I would say. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Again, I thought the guest singers on here were kind of tolerable, and, and the aesthetic of the instrumentals were pretty cool for at least the first few tracks but outside of that the, the, like oh uh, god this album is just a barren wasteland to me uh as far as trying to find something of entertainment value i'm feeling a uh, light to decent one on this thing Look, there's some really cool stuff going on with E. Sounds and ideas that are genuinely beautiful, strange, a little otherworldly. But next time around, I'm hoping for more meat on the bones so that when I come away from these songs, when I come away from an Echo project, it just feels like a bit more of it is sitting with me. Because with each song being as dodgy as it is structurally, it leaves some of the tracks feeling very fleeting. Still, I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven. On this one. Go, go wrong, I go wrong. So I, I got imaginary friends. While I did find some very admirable qualities about these tracks, uh, they are quirky, they are alluring, they are uh, very imaginative with their approach to production. After this, I think you could certainly call me Blade Curious. I'm still kind of torn on this though, because I think there's so many aspects of it that could be vastly, vastly improved. I'm feeling a strong five on this one. Liquid knives, check the price, get back no tomorrow. I'm gonna slide, let it ride, get a chance to spot though. With stars overall, I have really mixed feelings. Sure, this album does feature some of Lean's best production choices yet, but I'm still not super crazy about a lot of the songwriting and vocal performances. And for every spot on this album that is catchy or engaging, there is another one that comes off as forgettable and grating. Feeling a strong five to a light six on this one. And once again, I even found the production to be significantly less experimental than it was on Exeter. I think uh, this release is a lot more in line aesthetically with Blade's core albums, though I do think he pulled off that blissful sound a bit more effectively. Feeling a strong five to a light six on this one. For sure it's a pleasant listen, but it doesn't necessarily expand the universe of that drained sound, nor does it sound like it's on the cusp of anything in the way that 333 did. Still, much of the time on this project, I think Blade makes up for all of that stuff in a variety of different ways. Be it through his songwriting, his lyrical themes, his charming, boyish lead vocals. And yeah, while I didn't love this, I did kind of enjoy it. 
certainly enjoyed it more than a lot of what I've heard from Blade in the past, and uh, that's why I can say I'm feeling a strong six on this one. You know what, I really messed with this record, and I guess I can't be entirely surprised as I have enjoyed Echo's work in the past, but Crest was still catchier and much more captivating than I anticipated it would be going into it. It really does hit with an otherworldly sound and a super low-key beauty that, uh, when I hear it, it just feels very specific to this project in the best possible way. I'm feeling a strong 7 to a light 8 on this one. But, yeah, in my opinion, overall this tape, it's a mix. There's some tracks on here where Lean puts out some great stuff, uh, some of his boldest stuff, cool crossovers, especially with Twigs. But there are so many other cuts here, like usual, where vocally especially, I think the performances are just not up to snuff, and that's putting it lightly. <laughs> Sometimes they're just straight up bad. Uh, I feel a light to decent five on this project. Yeah, overall I really enjoyed this project. While there were some pockets that I was uh, hoping for more from in terms of either a better, clearer sound or a bit more length or structure. The ratio of great tracks on this thing is pretty high, plus on top of it, I think Blade uh, pretty easily proved uh, just how versatile this whole, like, you know, drained aesthetic, this style, this sound that is packed into everything that he does is. As long as he and White Armor or whoever else is going about it in the right way, he could pretty much approach any genre to his desire and sort of twist it into his own thing and sort of make it function within his world. And there's a special talent requirement to be able to do that sort of thing. I'm feeling a decent two strong seven on this one. Being real nice, I just keep it real, man. It's time we do or die, I'ma keep on living. I'ma stay alive, alive. There are a few lovely keyboard resolutions, the vocals sound pretty uh, a vast majority of the time, but none of these sweet sounds are carried by a super compelling song or anything like that. And as a result, I think Ty Boy's evocative images of rivers and moons and clouds uh, don't have the impact they could. So overall, I felt like this LP was just kind of okay. Again, had some highlights, uh, brought that classic Drain Gang sound, but didn't do anything beyond that to really stand out. Which, considering the amount of hype and attention this style of music is getting right now, now, I think Ty Boy could have pulled out the big guns a little bit more. Feeling a light to decent six on this one. Side project here from Swedish rapper, singer, and songwriter Young Lean or Jonathan Lean Doer. And yeah, we have an interesting one here from Lean. The singing on this thing is super dejected and disconnected and performed over these very dramatic and over the top, very theatrical pop and rock instrumentals. It's kind of like very sad karaoke or. Uh, like listening to the most depressed wedding singer of all time, which uh, is, is certainly interesting and a way of going about things that you can do. It was fun to listen to while it's on, but I think the novelty of this wore off for me pretty quick outside of a couple of tracks here and there that uh, I thought were genuinely well written and performed. But yeah, for the most part, this thing kind of seems like a, a, bit, a bit of a silly tongue-in-cheek joke, but uh, still, I guess, could be taken seriously to some degree.